And at long last, we're at our final batch of cards to review. Now, this did get revealed two days ago, but unfortunately, I haven't had time to get around to it. But now that the patch is out, we're finally going to get around to this. And I'm going to make this especially brief since, of course, uh, all this is actually live, I believe, in the game right now. So we'll go through this pretty quick. Uh, Phila Vandral, three strength gold card for Skoatel. The leader. Oh, it's the leader. All right. Create create a silver special card. What does that mean? So I have no idea what create means. Uh, does it, is it going to have create over here? Choose one out of three random cards from your faction and neutral cards, which you want to play. Choose one out of three random cards from your faction and neutral cards. If this was just faction, if it was just limited to faction, I think that'd be a lot better because you'd have a narrower scope to kind of look forward to. So it's kind of like discover. Create is discover. So discover a silver special card, basically, if you play Hearthstone. Uh, it... I wonder if that elf synergy is what pushes it over the top to being a must play. Cause at currently that the Skoatel leaders that are being played are already pretty good. And I'm not sure that this topples them yet. We'll see. Uh, if anything, I would see it maybe being some kind of elf synergy, if anything, but creating a special card from neutrals and your faction randomly, not even from your deck. That seems kind of bad. Also, it's really random. I don't like that. Usurper, the Nilfgaard leader of one strength, create any create any leader and boost it by two. Now, that seems really bad because why wouldn't you just put the leader you want to put in your deck kind of idea? Uh, granted, this is a, any leader and boost it by two. And this is also spying. So that's got spying synergy. That's really huge. If this didn't have spying synergy and they made it like instead like a three strength or a five strength, I think that'd be a lot weaker. But because it's spying and it's an officer, maybe that has some synergies that come in and uh, I, I think this is really interesting. I think it would be more of a meme card, but I think it's I think it's neat. But <laughs> but pretty bad, but fun. I like that. Uh, Arceus Arrakis Queen. The only thing I'm worried about is like. The things you're usually pulling are probably going to be cards that are or leaders rather that fit an archetype. And if you're playing that card, it's not going to be fitting your archetype, your archetype rather, because, you know, that's how deck building works, right? So you're getting cards that are less good than just putting in a better leader from your own faction on average anyway. But it could be fun. I like that. Uh, Arrakis Queen, seven strength. Oh, this is a leader too. Wait, so Monster got two leaders? Huh. Because I'm whispering Willow from before. I thought that was a leader too. Anyway, Arrakis Queen, consume three allies and boost self by their power. Immune. Wait, is this is this going to be the new... Monster leader? Is this going to be the new uh, vampire dude? Whatever he's called. Consume three allies. That has basically the same effect. But this time it's immune. Which is basically if you watched one of my earlier consume videos. Uh, from like a month or maybe two ago. I was saying like why would you ever play that leader if he's not going to be immune. Right? Because it's just terrible. Then you're just hitting the really small targets. Just to get off uh, consume synergy. But consume synergy by itself really isn't all that strong. A big perk of that card was being able to eat up your big monsters. And make it immune. So back when the gold immunity was in effect. So I'm really glad that they went back and added immune back into the game. Um, maybe it's pretty much just going to be, you know, like this one off card. I haven't seen immune pop up anywhere else just yet or so far, or maybe I missed it, but I'm glad that they brought it back. I think immune was really important for, oh, unseen elder. That was his name. <laughs> I'm so bad at these names. Uh, Agu <laughs> Aguilera, Aguara, true form, two strength, bronze, uh, not bronze, gold, neutral, create a bronze or silver spell. It's super random and it has bronze spells in there as well. I think this is pretty bad, uh, but it is Relic and it is Cursed, so maybe you have some synergies coming on there. But as a sand, I think that's too weak. Uh, oh, this is Aguera. Aguera, yeah. Uh, five power, neutral gold, choose to boost the lowest ally by five. Boost a random mute in your hand by five. Deal five damage to the highest enemy. Charm an enemy elf. <laughs> Charm an enemy elf, that's random. With five power or less. So you get to choose two of these. So basically, you're going to be getting around 15 of value each time. 15 power gold. That's a little bit slow and a little bit difficult to to kind of get the most out of. Um, I like the gold slots in a lot of decks are really competitive, so I'm not really sure I'm seeing this being powerful enough to see itself get some play. 
Uh, I think it's interesting though. I think there's a lot of room for because there's so many effects and you can you can pick from. You can pick from two of them. You have maybe this relic and curse energy. I get to see that, and it's neutral, so you can place on a lot of decks. I think there's a lot of potential for it, but I'm not really seeing the power just yet. Phoenix Draconid, five strength neutral gold. Resurrect a bronze or silver Draconid. It's really interesting. I'd have to see what kind of uh, what kind of Draconids you want to be taking back. Um, but until I actually see that, it's hard to gauge its power. It, it, like the kind of like I've said that a lot over the course of the series. It's not necessarily like that. I'm not <laughs> that I'm like flat out not knowledgeable that, about the game, and I am not aware how a card will affect the meta. It really it's kind of a mixture of you kind of got to see it in practice like you got to build decks around it which i'm not actually doing uh this is just straight up card reveal impressions uh not necessarily like deck building and theory crafting because that's for later you might as well just do it later it's not really much of a point in trying to do it now um but also it's like a sense of maybe this card isn't good now but it'll be good later kind of idea like right now i don't think there's a lot of draconids but maybe later you do find the draconids you want right uh because this can this can resurrect uh Mirga Brick to Brack, however you say that, the Silver Drake card. So you, you you know you have a deck where you're trying to line up a bunch of scorches or whatever, and you get two uh two Mirka Brick Merc Brick Bracks, <laughs> two Silver Drakes. You pull them out and you line up everything you need to, and that that's your win condition. I can see that being a good really good, but I can see that being a really good card in that kind of instance. But you need to actually be playing a deck archetype that focuses around doing that combo. And also, I think you need more tracking and targets because so far there's like maybe one. Plus a couple more, a uh, couple of lesser good ones. Anyway, uh, I think it's cool design though. Phoenix rising from the ashes. Anyway, Daz Dazbog Runestone Alchemy spell item neutral. No, not no nope, Nilf guard silver. Create a Nilfer. Uh, create a silver Nilf guide. Man, I cannot talk. Create a silver Nilf guard card. Create a silver Nilf guard card. So basically, you'd be buying. You get a spy. You would make a spy. A silver Nilfgaard card. That seems like this has a really wide berth. Oh, you have to create it though. You're not just picking anyone. At least it doesn't. At least it's not taking neutral into effect into the putting in the pool. I think there's. It's a little like again with like this whole set. There's like a whole abundance of more randomness, which I think has actually been a bit of a community outcry. And I kind of can see that but at the same time like i don't want to go down the rabbit hole of this whole discussion but some rng is nice i think i'm okay with discover effects i think discover effects even in hearthstone are perfectly fine i'm perfectly okay with it and having discover effects into gwent i think is like towing the line like getting up there and not passing it to the point of being something to be upset about uh but again it is random so that kind of leads to some issues you don't always get what you want sometimes you have to like sometimes you just get three terrible options and this card is like aff like laughably bad um but in the situation where like you know 70 percent like let's say 75 percent of the time you get a good card uh that is not just a good card because obviously you just play the good card but also like the synergies with this card and like you can kind of change up your game plan on the fly so games are less static. I'm in favor of that. It just depends. Like, I want to play with it and see just how often, like, kind of keep track of it, see how often I get a good, bad, or neutral effect, right? And if it ends up being, you know, 90% good or neutral, then this is a fine card, right? Then this RNG that they've introduced is fine. But if it's like ends up being like 60 percent like neutral or bad or something like that, like a majority of neutral or bad, then you have an issue. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Like and this is going to less this is going to get weaker over time as more Nilfgaard cards are added. Right. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to get down the whole rabbit hole, but rock slide spell special neutral silver. Damage two enemies. No, damage two damage. Deal two damage to up to 10 random enemies. Does it does it need to be unique enemies or can it hit the same one? Like uh whatever uh Felipe, whatever her name is from Northern Realms. Deal two damage to up to 10 random enemies. I'm assuming it has to be a unique enemy, or else this would just be a 12 uh 20 damage silver, which I think would be a little bit strong. Two damage up to 10 random enemies. I can see this being a include in very specific archetypes, but otherwise, I mean, in that specific ar archetype is very powerful, but I don't think you just take this on a whim. Glorious Hunt. If if losing, spawn an Imperial Manicore. If winning, spawn an Imperial Manicore Venom. 
Oh, this is interesting. So it's a silver neutral. Tactic special card. Important tactical to tactics card. Uh, so if you're losing, you get to spawn a 13 strength silver. But the thing is, you don't just put in Peril Manicord just because it's a fairly high strength bonus. You also put it in there because you can have synergies that proc off of it, like consuming it once you go to the graveyard or consuming it in your hand with Prince Toad, right? So just getting a 13 strength silver is not that great. It's okay, but not amazing. And also, that's usually in a deck that has low tempo options anyway, so Imperial Manicord fills two d duties, right? <clears throat> uh, and otherwise, if you were winning, you spawn the Manicord Venom. Deal 13 damage. I don't think this is a good enough card to be played in most decks, but I think if you're looking to get a second Imperial Manicor, like a consumed deck, I could see that happening. But otherwise, I think it's too weak. Also, uh, like this difference between losing and winning and changing the effect, I think is a really difficult thing to get right. It's something they actually, if you remember, they tried to do this before. Uh, I think it was called Bravery. And then they ended up actually scrapping that entirely. And then now they've brought it back, but not with the tag, just kind of... Uh, as a sentence long effect uh yeah so the only case i can see this being used is if you are playing imperial manicor if you're looking for a second imperial manicor in a consume deck <clears throat> a dragon stream alchemy special item but also this can be really susceptible to graveyard hate which is difficult to play around sometimes dragon stream apply a hazard to the enemy row that will explode and deal four damage to all units when a different special card is played uh, right off the bat, I think this card is absolutely terrible because you would have to have a hazard in enemy row that not only they stay on and are able to be confined to in some way, but also you have to get another special card. Wait. Oh, okay. I was thinking that you had to apply a second, second special hazard, but that's not the case. It just needs to be any special card. But a different special card is played. Okay, so it's any special card, right? Even including your your opponents. I think that could be really good. Because if you're playing like gold weather and you have all your 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 enemy has all their units confined in one row, you do four damage across, let's say, nine units, which is now the cap. You do 36 with one silver card. And it doesn't actually require that much setup because playing a second special card. Oh, wait, I was thinking it said silver. That's be special. That makes it even easier. You just have to play any special card. Okay, I can see that. That's pretty good. This is especially good in like some kind of like Axman deck or something like that. Some kind of like damaging, confining to a single row uh, by uh, by virtue of weather. So it can be pretty good. But you'd have to be able to set this up relatively reliably. So maybe you're playing movement or el otherwise you're playing a lot of weather. Or else your opponent's not just going to give you, you know, a, a, nine string, a nine unit stack on one row for no reason. Or at least they shouldn't. Uh, Vandergriff's Blade, Silver Northern Realms. This is, I think this is one that was leaked really early. This is one of like the first one that was leaked, leaked quote unquote. Destroy Bronze or Silver Cursed Enemy. That seems kind of weak. Or deal nine damage. Also really weak, especially considering the Silver card. If the unit was destroyed, banish it. That seems pretty good. If you can banish this against like Neckers, then maybe you have something going there. Destroy a Silver Cursed Enemy for a Silver card. I think this is would only be used to deal nine damage and banish a unit. I could see that being really, really good. Uh, and and like especially against like Skellige, if you can banish out their Axemen or you can banish their Great Sword or their uh, Long Ship or whatever, I think I could see this being really, really good. Also, I'm assuming this also works against gold cards. So if you manage to banish a gold card, they can no longer return it. Like a woodland spirit. So I can see this being incredibly good in certain circumstances, but not necessarily for killing cursed enemies. That seems a little bit niche, like super niche. But dealing d nine damage and banishing seems good. A good amount of the time. At the very least, it's a nine damage, which is pretty poor. But in the cases where it wins you the game by banishing a very specific unit, then I can see that being pretty incredible. But more as a tech card as opposed to uh, a kind of Jack of all trades, kind of placing every deck kind of card, which is fine. That's totally fine. Uh, Al Ghul, silver monster card, five power. Consume a bronze or silver unit from either graveyard and boost it, boost by its power. Consume a bronze or silver unit from either player's graveyard. Wait, isn't doesn't that already exist? Consume a bronze or silver. I feel like that already exists. Maybe they just have it under a different name. 
they have it under a different name now and change the old one or something. But anyway, so that's our, I'm pretty sure that's already in the game, so I don't really need to comment on it. It's pretty strong if you are able to set up a uh, graveyard in such a way. Henry Var Atre, Dine Strength Silver Nilfgaard. Conceal any number of units. Conceal. New, new keyword, conceal. Turn a reveal card over. What? Turn a reveal card over? That's unusual. If allies boost by two, if enemies deal two damage, does that mean it hides the strength total as well? And then doesn't flip at the end of the turn? How does that work? I have no idea how this works. I would need to see in the practice. I'd rather not comment on it until I know exactly what Conceal does. Um, but at a base level, it seems okay if you were playing a lot of Reveal, but... Wait, Reveal. Turn a Revealed card. So that, mean, no, no, so that means it has to be in your hand. Conceal any number. I was thinking of a spying tag for some reason. Uh, conceal any number of units. If it's your allies, boost by two. So you reveal a whole bunch of cards in your hand, and then you... But you already gave away that information. And then you hide it. Uh, you would have to be revealing, like, both hands by quite a lot for this to actually get some solid value out. Because you would have to hit at least... Uh three targets you'd have to hit at least three targets for this to be neutral like okay not too bad not too good and i think you'd reliably have to hit somewhere like around five for this to be good but also keep in mind this is not affecting the board state so i would say you'd have to be more i would say you'd have to be hitting on average of five for this to be acceptable to put in the deck and you would want to hit up to like seven to eight to be good so this would only be played in mass reveal Revealing both hands by quite a lot. And even then, I think that's a little bit difficult to justify. It's difficult, but only in reveal. So that's kind of the thing with uh, with cards like this that only fit a very specific uh, specific archetype. It's if they're not, if they are good enough to put in that archetype, then they will always be put in that archetype. But if they're not good enough to be into that archetype, then they won't ever be played in anything ever. So it's like a all or nothing kind of card kind of design. So this is Moonline again. Now, this is the actual card. This is the actual hazard. And it's a boon, too. Choose one. Apply a flu full blood moon or the full moon, full moon boon or blood moon hazard. So, uh, opponent side or your side. And this goes across all three rows, I'm assuming. Apply a boon to the allied row. Oh, no, it's only one row that boosts a random piece of vampire by two on turn start. So, you had to, it has to be a beast or a vampire. It can't be anything else. And this is a. Uh, Monsters only bronze special card. That seems really rough. To like, you'd have to be only playing uh, beast or vampires to reliably get this to get going. Apply hazard to an enemy row that deals two damage to all units on contact. So every time a unit gets pushed into it or played into it, they get dealt two damage, which is also really weak because weather does that automatically and it does it every turn. You don't have to have anything placed or pushed into it at all. So you like this base card by itself is like n not even half the strength of a regular weather card and weather cards are already pretty weak. So you are entirely relying on the uh, the the moon synergy on your cards, which I think is a tough sell right now because I just don't think there's enough cards in the set so far that allow you to do that. Reconnaissance. Oh, hey, <laughs> that was a uh, first light, right? Or clear skies, I don't know, whatever. Look at two bronze units in your deck, then play one. Look at two bronze units in your deck, then play one. So it's kind of like the old, um, or not the old, it's kind of like, what's his face? Emissary, but for neutral. I think this is okay. Eh. I wouldn't put it in by default, but I could see if you're really trying to pick out certain cards in your deck that you want to make sure you get, and this could be pretty good, but otherwise. You would have to be going especially for, like, particular combo pieces, like an Axeman or a, you know, um, Trebuchet or something like that. Golden Froth. Apply a boon on Allied Row that boosts two random units by one on turn start. This is something we saw back in the El Mahakim Ill event. This seems weak, but I could see... Oh, you know what? What if you played this on... What if you play this in the one Skeletal deck that uses those uh those 
dwarfy dudes or not maybe not necessarily dwarfy dudes but they have big backpacks and every time they get buffed or hurt or whatever they get buffed by two so i think this would be played in exactly that for now but there's some i like the addition of the boon cards as a counter not necessarily counter but a while it does counter weather i believe because it replaces the weather but it also a uh like a flip side of weather which is cool just it kind of pushes the design place the design space of gwent out which is always good even if it isn't necessarily powerful enough to be played just yet slave or in a in a wide sense slave infantry three power also typically doing damage is better than he healing or not necessarily healing but um buffing damage to a certain extent i think damaging is generally better than buffing because buffing can, can be punished pretty hard whereas damaging uh it just removes units off your opponent's board which is typically better slave infantry so it's weaker than weather in that sense you'd have to be getting synergies off for that to actually be good slave infantry soldier three power nilf guard spawn a copy of this unit on your other rows so it's a nine strength this is pretty good for any kind of swarm tactics i would have to see exactly how that goes though before i can comment too much on it. it seems pretty good like just even just at a base level nine strength bronze it puts three uh three strength on each row seems pretty good because there's a lot of different things you can do with that but as far as how often it will be played in decks is something that remains to be seen. Ice Troll, Force Strength, Bronze, Monsters, Duel, and Enemy. If it's under Frost, deal double damage. So Duel is the one where they deal damage to each other. And if they don't kill each other, then they keep dealing damage into each other until one dies. And this guy will deal 8 damage if they're under Frost. So you'd only play this on Frost, basically. So you'd, you'd hit him, you'd do 8 damage... Or you die and you lose your unit and you've done just eight a bronze eight and done a little bit of disruption so you'd have to kill whatever you're hitting and that in turn it would be a 12 strength bronze i think if you're playing a disruption deck i could see this being played i'd still rather play wild hunt warrior i think but it's interesting interesting i wouldn't i wouldn't cast it out just yet. maybe you play like one or two of these because see the thing is like drowner pretty much already does what this this is trying to do but maybe you're trying to specifically punish units that are sitting in frost as opposed to just trying to pull units to frost so it's kind of like the opposite of drowner in that sense so maybe you run two drowners and you run two ice rolls or something like that but still i think i'd still rather play wild hunt warrior generally because warrior is a little bit more uh reliable but this does more in this realm of not necessarily reliable output, but disruption output by killing units, which can be more important than just getting points in certain aspects. But also, if you're not actually hitting eight damage, maybe you're just doing six, then this becomes just a 10 strength bronze, which is worse. Obviously, I mean, <laughs> needless to say. So it's kind of a tricky thing. Werecat, five strength bronze. I said I was going to be fast about this, and I'm still already up to 20 minutes. Crazy. And there's still a good amount of cards. I said it'd be quick, but these are so many of them. There's so much to talk about. Werecat, 5 strength, bronze, monster 5 strength. Uh, deal 5 damage to an enemy, then deal 1 damage to all enemies under Blood Moon. You'd have to play this in specifically the Blood Moon deck. As it stands, it is 10 to 13 strength or something. I think that's too weak. Uh, even in a Blood Moon deck, I still don't think I'd play this card. Uh, and also, keep in mind, this is under the 5 strength. Uh, this is under the 6 strength, uh, the Lion where combo cards would be killed and also this has to be okay it doesn't necessarily have to be under blood moon but you'd want it to be under blood moon so barb barb gazi barb gazi consume an ally boost self by its power then become resilient oh so this is just this is just the uh, akimara whatever it's just akimara under a different name i wonder what they're changing the currently akimara to a durnian mauler that is a <laughs> that is some gruesome card art. Deal four damage to an enemy, seven strength, uh, soldier, bronze, northern realms unit. This seems pretty weak. You'd have to be very specifically trying to get the synergies out, otherwise this is weak. Clan, unless I'm missing something. Seven power, deal four damage to an enemy. Four, of course, is under that six threshold, so it's not even good in that aspect. Seems weak. Clan Marauder, soldier on crate, seven strength. Deal four damage. If resurrected, deal six damage instead. Okay, I like that. I like that. 
I think that's really interesting. You'd have to, but see, there are already so many revived targets for Priestess of Rhea. You need to revive this. There would need to be additional ways to revive characters for this to be getting a good reliable amount of value. Yeah, I totally to get a good reliable amount of value. I could see you running like a one of these just to make sure you have a target in the graveyard that is good to bring out with the Priestess of Freya as opposed to something that's less good. Uh, I can see this being played in discard. Like a one, maybe two of, and discard brand or something like that. Uh, Sentry. Eight power. Boost all copies of a soldier by two. That kind of goes in line with that other card we saw up, uh, up above. That did uh, three, three, three across the rows. So in that sense, if you're playing like a swarmy soldier uh, Nilfgaard deck, this is really powerful. But it would have to be exactly and basically that archetype. Or else you're just getting like maybe a eight to ten strength card. But otherwise... I think I think it's cool, but it very specifically fits within a archetype. Uh, Forktail, Draconid, eight power, consume two allies and boost self by their power. This is potentially really bad because if you boost yourself by their power, you're probably going to be at a pretty high strength. Will make you a lightning rod for all kinds of like scorch effects and other crazy things. So this is you would have to be very careful in the situation in which you'd use this, and you'd make. You'd want to make sure you're either playing this like as the last card in round three or something like that, or in a situation where you're consuming small strength things just to get some consume synergy off. So basically, play some consume synergy or maybe a Necker deck as like a one of on round three or something. Uh, Master of Disguise, conceal two cards. Love and Strength, Nilf card, conceal two cards. Why would you want to conceal cards? You've already revealed what they were what does concealing them do at least with the other card if you conceal them you give yourself two boost i can see that being okay but this is just concealing it seems bad uh even like in a reveal deck like a real minded kind of playing with that concept kind of deck i still wouldn't play this unless there's like some mega conceal synergy coming in later or maybe in the next set maybe this like conceal becomes crazy but as it stands like <laughs> concealing two cards is utterly pointless without synergy around it uh, Clan Smuggler, 10 power, return a bronze unit from your graveyard to your deck. Mmm, I don't know how to feel about that card. You bring it back to your deck. What In what instance would you want to do that? Because usually when you put something in your graveyard, it's because you put it there, and you want to be able to pull from it. So when you put it back into your deck, you're kind of reversing that process. I find it hard right now to see where this where its strengths lie, but it's interesting. Uh, maybe like if there's some particular instance where you do want to do that, then this would be the go to card. But otherwise, full test is pride damage ending by two. Move it to the row above. Crude, that's a new keyword or at least revamp keyword. Repeat its ability damage ending by two. Move it to the row above, and you could potentially. Wow, this seems really bad. Maybe crude means every time you play, does, do they have the keyword over here? Crude. No, they don't. Huh. Okay, so let's say you get this off twice. That makes it a 14 strength silver, which is absolutely terrible. Maybe crude is every time you play like a crewman card, you repeat this effect. So you play one crewman effect, bam, you get it again. You play another crewman effect, bam, you get this again. Play another crewman, bam, just keeps going and going and going. But that would require a pretty long round and a lot of crewman effects to go off. And that wouldn't like at a base level, this is pretty weak. You would have to this would have to be with a, in conjunction with some kind of like deck where you're trying to get all your enemy units onto the row above. And also that crude ability would have to work exactly like I just said. It can't just be like a 14 strength move two units. That'd be terrible. It would have to repeat every time you get even if you do repeat it every time you put a crewman on the deck, that's still pretty weak. But we'll see. Sabrina Spectre. I think they actually, did they spell this correctly? Isn't it S-P-E-C-T-R-E? Not E-R. Anyway. Resurrect a bronze cursing in it. I don't know. Like, you'd have to have a specific bronze cursing you want to revive, or otherwise this is bad. Sleeping Giant. Oh, this is the last one. Uh, so the, I kind of revamped or retooled Sleeping Giant. Old Spear Tip, whatever. Uh, strengthen all units by one, wherever they are. Old Orgroid, whatever. So you play this, it's pretty powerful, high, relatively high tempo play. An old spear tip. Oh, are they different cards now? I think they're different cards now. No longer is this transforming into this. 
So this, now Old Spirit Tip is his own card. Deal two units out to five enemies on the opposite row. So this is potentially a 20 strength gold. Dealing two damage up to five. That's not too difficult to pull off. I think that's reasonable. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. You wouldn't necessarily put it in every deck, but I think it's pretty strong. Like if you like, or especially if you're doing something like a free to play run or something like that, and you get old spear tip, uh, and you're just trying to like replace, you know, Geralt or Triss Miracle or something like that. I could see old spear tip being a pretty good place in like just a good, solid, relatively reliable power. Not necessarily played in everything. Not necessarily like, yeah, just a fine card. Nothing to complain about. Nothing to write home about. So that's everything. Oof, man, we're up to 30 minutes. Crazy. I'm just going to release this as one instead of breaking it up two parts because it's the last one. And also, the cards are already in the game, so go and play them <laughs> while you're watching this review. But anyway, this is just kind of an insight to my thoughts into what, what what's maybe to be expected. Uh, I'm trying to look for my favorite card. I didn't necessarily have one. Uh, geez. Yeah, I didn't really care for any of this. I, I guess maybe the immune tag on quote-unquote Unseen Elder. Uh Touching on Discover and its place in Gwent. Oh, jeez. Maybe this card is pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is a little bit of a weak uh, reveal. Maybe, I guess because it's the last reveal and the cards are going to be in the game in like a day or two from when they revealed it. It's like, uh, who cares? Let's just, you know, finish this up already. Uh, actually, a lot of these were pretty bad. <laughs> a lot of them are either super archetypal or just straight up bad. So it's interesting. So I don't know. I don't have a favorite pick for this week, but my favorite from the entire set. Uh, let's see. Just to kind of like, I don't want to create another video where I go and like play stars on the cards because whatever, you know, you, you can just go in. You do that when there's a long time in between the reveal and when you actually are playable. Like in Hearthstone, you know, do like last year it was like a couple months. Uh, this time around, it's only like two weeks. So <laughs> there's no reason to do a second reveal review whatever and also i don't really feel like it's neat necessary to create a whole bunch of my top five cards from this set from this week <laughs> whatever it's just a bunch of uh repeat stuff i'm not gonna do that probably a favorite card art of the set right there uh let's see i know there was one card way up here that i really liked i don't remember what it was though Oh, this one, Bridgestool. That's uh my top. Let's let's say it's my number one so far. Yeah, does monsters get two leaders? No, they must be uh retconning on unseen elder. So Bridge Toll is so far my number one. I think Siri Nova is uh potentially meta breaking. I would have to play her. Let's see. Cause it's just so crazy. If you already have two copies of a bronze card in your starting deck, that's starting power to 25, and then you combine this with some other stuff, and it's just out, it's just whack. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Bridge Stole is probably my single favorite one of the set. Like, I get this kind of, I guess it's kind of not just because it's the strongest, uh, but because it's my, I think it's, it's something that. It's super vital. There's Uma's Curse, by the way. You use Uma's Curse and that's Siri Nova. Pretty crazy. Also, I think Uma's Curse is like a preemptive renew, which is a really interesting like card design. I mean, it's kind of like the same with Bridge Toll. Like both of these are card designs that are inevitable to being added to Gwent. It's just kind of like they should exist and now they're being added. So it's nice. It's not like, oh man, why was this not in the game before? It's just, you know, it takes time and they got around to it this time around and great good on them we got these cards in the game now they're the flip side of the coins to other to other things right and i guess not necessarily out of power but out of like again just kind of like pushing that design space more and more and more umis curse and bridge are doing that and i think it's great and it's not anything unexpected or crazy or anything like that or out of the park it's just it, it's just another push right just keep pushing just keep pushing that sides out right <laughs> if that makes any sense. I'm kind of like visual visualizing sand and you're just pushing sand to the edges constantly. Uh, but yeah, Umi's Curse, Bridge Coal are cards that I'm not like, again, not necessarily super powerful, uh, but cards I think you'll be seeing a lot of uh, like from now until Gwent is over and done with. Right. Because they just fulfill 
Oh, girl, Yerdin seems really interesting. Because you reset all units, just resetting all units. If you're playing against some kind of swarm death that does a lot of buffing, uh, Geralt Yarden just completely wipes that out. I think this card is potentially broken. Uh, not necessarily broken because it's too powerful, because it can just utterly shut down any kind of like token slash uh, swarmy slash buffy decks. I think you would, this would be a, like a huge tech card that you put in. So Geralt Yarden, Bridge Toll, Uma, and that's pretty much, I'll call that my top three. Yeah. Uh, number one, Bridge Toll. Number two, Uma, or whatever it was called. And three, Geralt Yarden. Pretty incredible. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.